quiet moves by Lou Lamorello, what it means and what Lou should have done at the trade deadline. Plus, we'll preview tonight's game against the Ottawa Senators, including the keys to the Islanders winning that game. And we have our Islanders birthday of the day and a whole lot more coming up on this special live NHL trade deadline edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Tuesday edition of the Locked on Islanders podcast, but really a special live Monday afternoon edition for the NHL trade deadline. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked on sent you. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So today was the big day. This was the NHL trade deadline, the deadline at 3 o'clock Eastern time, just about a minute ago. And to everybody's slight surprise, not huge surprise, but slight surprise, Lula Morello and the New York Islanders basically not making any moves at the deadline. Now, we thought that on Sunday, yesterday, we saw Cal Clutterbuck and Andy Green held out of the Islanders lineup, and we figured, hey, you know, uh, sounds like that means that these guys are quite possibly going to be traded uh, on the on the block, so to speak, We also know we had Zdeno Chara and Zach Parise on expiring contracts. Well, no moves as of yet. Now, keep in mind, sometimes uh, you get to 3 o'clock. That's the deadline. Moves that were made but uh, weren't yet filed and made official uh, end up being announced after the 3 o'clock deadline. So it is still possible. The Islanders make a move, but as of right now, it is looking more and more like the Islanders stayed put. And I think that was a mistake by Lou Lamorello, and I'll explain why. Realistically, we know that the New York Islanders are not going to make the playoffs this year. They, they, this game, in order, uh, rather for the rest of the season, in order to make the playoffs, they would need to be 5% of the remaining points that are on the board for them in order to reach playoff contention. And even then, it isn't necessarily guaranteed. So tough situation. Obviously, the COVID earlier in the year, the 13-game road trip to start the season, some key injuries uh, that really cost the team not able to recover, and they're not making the playoffs this year. So the question is, you got a guy like Zach Parise. You got a guy like Andy Green. You got a guy like Cal Clutterbuck. Why not make some move for them? Because they're not going to help you make the playoffs this year. If you really love a guy like Zach Parise, you can go and re-sign him over the summer, even if you trade him away. Same with Andy Green, same with Cal Clutterbuck, same with Zdeno Chara. Uh, If you even get a seventh round pick for one of those guys, then it's worth it. It's more than you would have had in, you know, if you don't make any move at all. Unfortunately, the not making any move at all is very much what the Islanders and Lou Lamorello ended up doing, again, unless something comes across uh, at the last minute that was done before 3 o'clock Eastern time, but is announced officially after it. But the only player out of those four that I could understand the Islanders holding on to for the rest of this season is Zdeno Chara, and I'll tell you why. Not that Zdeno Chara is the end-all and be-all, for the New York Islanders. 
And clearly he got off to the rough start this season, did not play his uh, best hockey until, you know, maybe January when he started to really mid-December, late December, early January when he started to come around. But here's what you get with Zdeno Chara that I think is helpful. Zdeno Chara has been paired very frequently with Noah Dobson. And there is little doubt that Dobson's growth has been in part sped up and helped along by being paired with his Dano Chara, by being teammates with Big Z, by being able to watch what Chara does on a day in, day out basis. That has helped Noah Dobson escalate, speed up his development. And we've seen good things from Dobson this year as a result in part of being teamed with Chara. So for that reason alone, I could understand not being eager to trade Zdeno Chara. But when it comes to Cal Clutterbuck, Zach Parise, Andy Green, I mean, maybe there was no interest. That is always a possibility, but even if you get a seventh round pick, you're better off with that than you are with what they will end up with now, which kind of appears to be nothing. And you compare what the Islanders do with the trade deadline to some of the other teams that are clearly not making the playoffs. The Montreal Canadiens have sold off a number of pieces. The San Jose Sharks, who were in the playoff hunt until fairly recently and then went on to a slump, they have been trading a lot of pieces away. This Islanders team, the way they are presently constituted, there is a core there that you want to keep. And I'm not saying you trade away a Matthew Barzal or even a Kyle Palmieri or even a Josh Bailey, although although it would have been tough to get someone to take Bale's salary. But by making no move at all at the deadline, I think Lou Lamorello missed an opportunity to accelerate the development of some of his younger players and to help the cap situation a little bit for this year. Maybe you can carry some of that over. And more importantly, here's what will be interesting to watch going forward. Do the New York Islanders now, in my mind, do the right thing and start playing Kiefer Bellows on a regular basis? Start giving more ice time to Oliver Wallstrom? Do we see Robin Salo in the lineup now instead of Andy Green or Sebastian Ajo getting more game time than some of these older players? I think that that would be a great thing for the Islanders to do. With all of these players on account, even though concern a coach in Barry Trotz who prefers to go with veterans and that we still may see these veteran players in the lineup on a game-in, game-out basis when, in the long run, the Islanders are better off seeing what Kiefer Bellows can do, letting him, let him make mistakes. It doesn't matter at this point. You can go out there and let Kiefer Bellows play and learn by making mistakes. You can see Oliver Wallstrom playing more minutes and making mistakes because the outcome of these games is now secondary to developing some of these players. And it'll be interesting to see what with ice time the rest of the way, that is to me going to be the big key. We have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. Tuesday night, Islanders, Senators, the next game on the schedule. We'll give you a look at the Senators and what the Islanders need to do in order to beat Ottawa. We've got that, our Islanders birthday day, and some more thoughts on the trade deadline all coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. 
Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Bet Online. It's that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering and information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action and where the game starts. If you've got some, it's an email, the email address locked on islanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Islanders, and you can follow Gil Martin on Twitter at Ice Wars. NYR VSNYI will keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So follow me there, and always great to uh, interact with fans, and I'll give you some instant insight and analysis into what's going on on the ice. Tuesday night at home at the UBS, a 7.30 start against the Ottawa Senators and the Islanders facing an Ottawa team that has lost four of their last five games, their last game uh, in Montreal, five to one. They beat Philadelphia the game before that and then had home losses to Chicago, Arizona and Columbus. So after playing some better hockey, Ottawa sort of cooling off a little bit. And look, this is a team that is young, that is still sort of learning. And look, Ottawa right now, 27th in the league in goals scored, 23rd in goals against. They are not really hitting on all cylinders. The power play, mediocre, a little below average, as a matter of fact, 22nd in the league with an 18.7% success rate. Penalty kill in the middle, 15th. They kill off 80% of opposing teams' uh, power play chances. Your goaltending uh, right now, the Senators, You know, again, had their issues there. Has he goals against Avon, 918 save percentage. Gustafson, a 378 goals against and an 886 save percentage. Brady Kachuk leading the team with 44 points. Josh Norris has 26 goals. Norris, a Cy Young Award candidate, only 10 assists. Uh, so, again, this is a team that, you know, the Islanders have faced before. They've played well against Ottawa. And it will be important for the Islanders to just stick to their kind of hockey. And we saw this more frequently in recent games, but not so much Monday against the Philadelphia Flyers, where the Islanders were just allowed too much time and space, and they cannot afford to do that. At this junk Ottawa, but if you give them the time and space, they still have enough talented players that can hurt you. And the Islanders have to be aware of it. We look at the line combinations for the Sens. Nora centering Brady Kachuk, Colin White, that's the top line. And Al Formanton and Connor Brown, that's the Enters the third group, Tyler Ennis, Adam for the uh, Senators, going to be Dylan Gam uh, Gambrell with Zach Sanford and Austin on the blue line for, for Ottawa. Uh, the first pairing for the Sens. The first pairing for the Sens, 
Eric Benstrom and Artem Zub, Nick Holder Met and Josh Brown are the third pairing. And again, uh, your your goaltending tandem as well. Injuries have been a factor for the uh, for the Senators pretty much all year. And it, it's hurt them. They still have a number of players out on IR. So the Islanders, you know, have to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. You know, the Senators, like we said, they've been inconsistent all season. And when you get the chance, the Islanders are playing them a bit on a downswing. I mentioned they've lost uh, four of their last five. And part of the problem for Ottawa has been goal scoring. Uh, One goal in the loss to Montreal, who's not exactly a defensive powerhouse. Three goals against Philly, one goal against Columbus, and then three against Chicago and Arizona. So they have been struggling there. On the power play, watch Josh Norris. He is their big weapon. 13 power play goals for Norris. Uh, That's half of his 26 goals on the season. And by the way, no other player on the roster has more than five power play goals. Uh, And that's always sort of an issue that they go to one guy and he is sort of their focal point on the power play. He also has seven game winning goals and no other player on this team has more than three. The Islanders got to stick to their game. Don't let the Senators get to a situation where, you know, they've got speed coming through the neutral zone. Cannot. And from an offensive perspective, New York Islanders, guys, shoot the puck. The Islanders had really struggled to shoot the puck against the Flyers. And look, this has been a problem for the team all year long. Memo to Matthew Barzal, shoot the darn puck. Shoot early, shoot often. Anders Lee, got to shoot. Brock Nelson, got to keep shooting. He's one of the few players who has been shooting on a regular basis. But for the Islanders, they have got to make sure they get more pucks on net. Because if they don't, it is going to hurt this team. Uh, Or should I say, it will continue to hurt this team. And uh, it it really is sort of a uh, frustrating thing for fans to watch. It's one thing to have a couple of players, you know, your, your Josh Bailey's or your Matthew Barzal's, who are primarily passers first. But too many guys on this team do not shoot the puck enough. And look, I didn't expect Islanders and Lou Lamorello to go out and acquire a sniper at the trade deadline. You know, they could get Jacob Chikrin, uh, but that apparently did not happen. Uh, Chikrin, not an expiring contract. So, you know, they could have made him more of a long-term acquisition. It didn't happen, but at the same time, uh, you got to get guys who are shooting the puck, and that's got to happen during this offseason because the Islanders need a sniper to pair with a Matthew Barzal and to get this offense going. If they don't, uh, they're going to struggle to score, and we're going to be right more or less where we've been uh, this whole time, and that is not good enough for the New York Islanders. When we come back, we will have our Islanders birthday and played in the 2000s, played for both the New York area teams, the Rangers and the Islanders, put up a couple of, you know, solid offensive games as well. See if you can guess who that is, and we'll have some more thoughts about the trade deadline. But first, This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto, numbers of makes and models. It is now impossible for your local chain and auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry? 
You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You could save time and money when using Rock Auto. So why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And Rock Auto's got everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even a new car. Auto.com right now. Right on there. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Now for our Islanders' birthday of the day, Tuesday, day for Worcester, Mass. Down by the Edmonton Oilers back in 1996. at Boston University uh, before joining the Oilers in 98-99. Then went on to play uh, four seasons for the Rangers. And joined the Islanders for 2006-2007. Islanders spent one year with the Isles, played in 78 games, six goals, 44 points, and 74 penalty minutes. Did play in all five playoff games for the Islanders that year and had three assists. So he actually did well uh, for the Islanders in that game playoff series loss to the Buffalo Sabres. Then spent the next five years with the Capitals before hanging it up at the end of the 2012-2013 season. 824 career NHL games for 69 goals, 327 points. contests. We're going to go back and look at one of Tom Pope Islanders. October 21st, 2006, saw Veterans Memorial Coliseum, Islanders, and the Hurricanes. John Graham, the goalie for DiPietro in the Nets for the Islanders. No scoring in the first period, but in the second period the Islanders power play gets fourth Mike Sillinger and Alexi Yashin with the assists at 7.53. one nothing Islanders after two periods in the third the Islanders add to their lead Mike York his second from Alexi Yashin and our Islanders birthday of the day Tom Pody time of the goal 51 but the lead is short-lived the gains are short Eric Belanger off for tripping but Justin Williams scores from Rod Brindamore and Tim Gleason. That was his at 638. We're tied 1-1. With Victor Kozlov off in the box, Justin Williams scores again, this time a power play goal for Carol Ray Whitney with the assist at 828. Islanders down 2-1. to one. Then Brindamore scores at 3-1. 3-2, excuse me, Ryan Beta and Brett Hedekin with the assists, but with three minutes and 10 seconds left, Mike Sillinger ties the game on the power play. Yashin and Tom Pody, our Islanders' birthday of the day with the assists. The game heads to overtime. And who gets the game winner in OT? But our Islanders' birthday of the day, Tom Pody. Mike Commodore was off for holding late in the third. The power play carried over, and Pody cashed in his second of the game, uh, second of the year, rather, Alexi Yashin and Miro Shatan with the assists. Game winner, Islanders in overtime with a 4-3 win over the Hurricanes. Rick DiPietro, 37 saves in a game the Islanders were outshot. 40-20, Islanders' birthday of the day. One goal, three-point game. He scored on his only shot on goal as he had the game winner. So uh, happy birthday to Tom Pody. He is 45 on Tuesday. And he is our Islanders of the day. Overall, got to say, I am disappointed that the Islanders did not make a move on trade deadline day. It really would have made 
too much sense for the Islanders to do something to improve this team. And it is a problem that this team is not trying to improve themselves. You know you're not making the playoffs. You got to go out and make some kind of move. Again, any of these guys on expiring contracts can be re-signed next year if you really love the effort that Zach Parise is giving you. And I can understand why he is uh, always one of those guys who gives you a great effort. But it is uh, disappointing that Lou Lamorello didn't do anything at the trade deadline. And to me, the key going forward right now is that the Islanders do not just uh, spend time playing the veterans the rest of the way. They cannot afford to do that. It is just something that would be detrimental to this team. Get Robin, Sebastian Ajo, Kiefer Bellows, uh, and, and Oliver Wallstrom more ice time. Let them make their mistakes. Let them learn because that is what makes this team better in the long run, and you're not making the playoffs this year. Want to thank everyone again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We'll be back on Wednesday with our farm report and our key takeaways from the Islanders home game against the Ottawa Senators. Now make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help make you the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts and don't have uh, the, a live show at 3.30. Go to the Locked On NHL feed for that as they will cover all things trade deadline around the league on that feed. Thanks again for listening and thanks for tuning in to this special live trade uh, NHL train edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.